So it's been exactly one year since I finished directing my very first short film, Temporal Incursion. Over the last five years or so, I'd always wanted to make a short film. Well, I never really got the opportunity to do that. When you're younger, you don't really have the money to afford props or actors, and on top of that, I just wasn't that good with a camera. But as the years progressed, I wanted to make my very first short film more and more. This is something every director does at some point, and it's how they begin their career. Now, I was lucky enough to be able to do this through my school, Chemeketa. Chemeketa is not a film school by any means, it's actually a community college where I live. But the thing is, they had a three-term course that was about filmmaking. Now, the first course was about documentary filmmaking, the second was about narrative filmmaking, and the third was when we actually got to make our very own short film. So I want to show you what it was like to actually direct a short film. Hopefully some of these things can help you when directing your first short film. The first thing I want to talk about is the actual process of making a short film. So the film Temporal Incursion wasn't actually my own idea. There was a scriptwriter for the movie itself, and the instructor of the course actually went over it with him multiple times, and they cut down the script to something that worked really well. After that, the whole group came together, and we worked on cutting down the script to something we thought made sense. The script was a lot more polished than when it was first made, but we still had to cut down some things, or if there was some lines that were too wordy, we decided to scrap them. Once we had the concept really solid, we were ready to start assigning roles. So when it came to assigning roles, we each decided what we wanted to do most and wrote it down, and the instructor finally selected who was doing what. I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to be director as well as director of photography. This was really nice and a great opportunity because I had always wanted to direct my first short film, but I also really enjoyed the idea of being behind the camera and framing the shot myself. So we also wrote down on note cards the order we were going to shoot in, since you don't want to shoot everything in the order it actually happens in the story. This was our way of grouping together scenes that happened in the same area. So we had different cards for different days when we were actually going to start shooting. Next we moved on to getting together the props and actually set dressing. So we got together different outfits, different things like weapons, and things that just set the mood like papers that had certain dates on them or reference time travel and we even had a gateway made by the person who came up with the story and he did a fantastic job of making the gateway to introduce time travel to our film. We were also really lucky to be able to work in a large space for our short film. We had this large classroom like area that had a lot of open looking wires and kind of looked like a darker more mechanical place. This really helped fit with the vibe of the movie. So once we finished setting up the sets for the film, we were ready to start filming. So when it finally came to actually shooting the short film, we only had five weeks out of the nine week course left. When we actually got together to shoot the film, it started out pretty slow. Every time we'd get together, we weren't quite sure what we were gonna do yet. We had the plan and the note cards on what we needed to shoot that day, but it was kind of just figuring out how to creatively get the shots to work. Oh, oh, God, I missed it. So we did have storyboards for the film as well, but when you're actually shooting the film, there's things you just want to change to make it look better. But eventually, once we got going, the first hour or so in, things started to flow a lot better. Everybody was getting more on the same page, and we knew what we were doing. Things like setting up sets, like say, the library scene we did, were going a lot faster. Another example is the gateway shots when he went through the gateway. So essentially what we did was we set up the gateway in the middle, we had a fog machine running, we had lights flickering, there was different people operating the lights as well as the fog machine, and we were really lucky to be able to get a pretty cool effect. After actually shooting the film came the editing of course. There was three editors in total including myself, and we basically worked together to come to a solid idea of what we wanted the film to look like. We tried quite a few different cuts and saw what worked best. Eventually we agreed on an idea of how we wanted it to look, and then we started working on things like sound design, color grading, and visual effects. This is where the film started looking a lot better. When you have the sound effects and the visuals put in, it just works out a lot better. When shooting the film and actually seeing the raw footage, I personally was a little bit worried about how it was going to come out, but it turned out a lot better than we expected when it came to the visuals. Now when we had the film finally done, fully edited, and we watched over it, it was just clear that the movie didn't make sense. 
it's essentially a prequel to a larger story, and so therefore it is a bit confusing. If you actually watch the short film I made, it doesn't quite make sense if you're just an audience member. That was part of the problem when actually putting together the short film because we got it explained to us, the actual bigger story going on, so we had a better idea of the story itself. But for viewers who didn't have that explanation, it was hard to follow. This is where we had to start problem solving. We introduced an intro card, something similar to Blade Runner, that kind of gives some context to the story. We all felt that this helped explain what was going on more, but it just simply jumped around too much. I should have realized that the movie was just too complicated and that we should have simplified it. That's probably the biggest mistake I actually made when making this film, was not simplifying it. When you make a project like that, you want it to be this grand thing that has a really interesting and elaborate story, but that's not always better. So then came the premiere. So I was lucky enough to get to show this to everybody that had worked on the project, as well as family and friends. This was a really fun experience just getting together, having snacks, and watching the movie I had made on a big screen. It was an incredible feeling actually seeing people watch the work we had made. So that was basically the process of actually making the film, and I was super thankful for it. I would never trade the experience of making that short film with all those people. Everybody had different talents and were better at other aspects, and it was really fun to come together and make a piece of work. Now, I want to talk about what I actually learned from directing a short film. The first thing I really learned from this experience is leadership is key. As a director, you just have to be able to get everybody together and on the same page. Being my first time as a director, I was definitely underprepared for it. I was not ready for the responsibility of being in charge of everybody and telling everyone what to do. It's something you know you have to do as director, but it's a lot easier said than done. And I simply just didn't do a great job of that. I needed to do better at telling people what I wanted done. It's not about being rude or bossy, but just making it clear what I have envisioned for this short film and what I need from them. The second thing is simplifying. This is something I've already talked about a lot because it's one of the main issues with the short film itself. I should have told a more condensed story that was isolated and not about a bigger picture. It's one of those things when thinking about it, it was a great idea to have this larger story, but we had to explain so much in the beginning and leave the film on to be continued. Those aren't great things when putting together a short film, because not necessarily anybody would come back to watch a sequel or even understand what's happening in the first place. As a director, I should have just took in charge and simplified the story to something that could be watched by anybody and they could understand it. The third thing that I learned was experience is really important. Now this one's obvious, but the instructor of the course, Christian, was so helpful in helping us with lighting and simply just solving problems we had. There's a shot where we have what looks like blinds and then a light going through it onto our subject's face and this was an effect we could achieve because he had the idea to cut out slits on a piece of moldable uh, metal sheet or something but it is just having that experience and dealing with previous issues and just knowing how to light, those things really help. So I'm going to take that going forward and just simply make more content, create more movies work more with my camera, and just get a better understanding of how to make films. Probably the fourth thing I learned was everybody has their own vision of the film. I'm sure the screenwriter of the movie had a much better idea of what was going on than say even me as the director, or say one of the editors, or the person in charge of props. But we have an idea in our heads of what the movie looks like, but as a director it was my job to get us on the same page and have everybody sure of what was going on. Next is the good and bad of the movie I made itself. And if you want to watch the movie and then come back and listen to my thoughts on the good and bad parts of the movie, feel free, it's linked above. Now what I think we did best with this short film is the visual storytelling. This ranges from the shots that I framed, to the visual effects from some of the editors, to even the things like light. While we had a very low budget to make this film and we usually got props that we already owned, I think overall we did a great job at creating the atmosphere and the world of Temporal Incursion. You know, from the set design, having you know the actual gateway created was a fantastic prop that sets out our short film from many other short films, even if they are in a sci-fi world. That's not something you usually see. So the second thing I think we did really well is the sound design. We had really good music, sound effects, and the audio was pretty good itself. I think we did a great job at blending the three together and really telling the story through the sound. And the last thing I think we did pretty well with the short film was the acting. 
The actors in this film did a fantastic job considering that none of them were actually actors. It's not like these people had spent years practicing acting. There were some people with more experience in acting, but in general these were just people in the class. And I think for what we were working with, they did a fantastic job. You know, the storytelling is complicated, but if you just watch their performance, they all did a fantastic job in making the story come to life. And now comes the bad parts of this movie. And the worst part is clearly that it didn't make sense. This is something I can admit as the director of the movie, and for anybody who watches it, I'm sure you'll agree to some extent. Even though it shot well, it sounds good, and the acting was pretty good, I can't say that the story itself wasn't put together very well. Now, we had a really great concept, but we just needed to simplify it, like I said. The second thing that I think we didn't do too well is we jumped around in time too much. For short films, you shouldn't do this in general because, you know, you're just kind of cheating the story and not telling a cohesive story, but we did a really bad job of going in the past and then going in the future and doing that three or four times. That simply just didn't work to tell the story we had. And the last thing I don't think we did too well with the short film is the tone of it. While we did have a really good atmosphere and feel to the world of Temporal Incursion, we simply didn't nail the emotional tone of the film. Here's a great example of what I'm talking about. What if it was Elizabeth? Would you blame me then? I'm sorry. Erasing our fiancé from history would be quite devastating. I think this is a great example because it shows you an emotional scene that's basically just taken away because we cut it down with comedy. This is something tonally we should have fixed. I want to share my honest experience when it came to making a short film with a group of people. So probably the most honest thing I could share from my experience was not everybody agreed. We had different ideas and this makes sense. When you're working with a group of people, not everybody's going to agree. So since we didn't all agree on everything, some people would be more excited for the project than others. You know, and that's part of the issue with it because you want everybody to be on the same page and excited with the project. And I feel like eventually we did get to that point, but it did take us quite a while. The second thing that I really noticed with this short film was not everybody was really focused on the project of Temporal Incursion. Now, I say this because we actually had two projects going on in the course, and originally this course is supposed to be we all work together on one short film, but we had two really solid ideas, and we wanted to make both of them. So we clearly had the issue with the two separate projects of some people were directing projects while also acting in the other. So this clearly makes a conflict because we're shooting the two projects at the same time because we only can shoot at that time. So this created an issue where sometimes the actors would have to leave to go work on the other film directing, or they'd have to leave their own film from directing and come and act in my film. So this was part of the issue because, you know, we just simply couldn't balance the two films. Now clearly this is no one's fault. We wanted to make both projects. But I feel like ultimately not having everyone work together simply just brought down the quality of both projects. We had to make compromises for both of them. The third thing, to be pretty honest, is you're not always feeling that creative. I know I would go in some days and I wouldn't really have a clear vision of what I'd want to do when it came to directing the short film. While I was always excited about the project, some days you just don't know how to frame a shot or how to come up with a solution on the spot. This would cause in lower energy and not getting to a quick start when actually making the short film, which seems pretty important as we kept going in the course, is that we need to be on top of it from the start so we can actually get the shots we need throughout our time shooting. So the last thing I really noticed from this experience is we were all working together as a team. Despite any small issues we had or if somebody had to go to work on another short film, the thing was we all wanted these projects to come together. So it's really important that we actually wanted to see these projects through. You know, if we had multiple people who just simply didn't care about the project, it wouldn't have turned out and it would have been a lot worse. So I'm really grateful we all worked together. Also, I was really lucky to have somebody in the group create a documentary about the short film I made. I'm really grateful for them making that, so if you do want to check that out, that's linked above as well. So even if I did end up simplifying the story and have it be an isolated idea, this wouldn't have just made the film perfect. I need to continue improving at things like actual cinematography, being able to have three-dimensional characters, and ultimately become a better storyteller. There's always room to improve, but this film was a great step forward. And that's essentially what it was like for me directing my first short film. 
I hope some of the things I talked about can help you when you're shooting your first short film and you can avoid some of the mistakes I made. It's an experience I'll always be grateful for and I got to work with a lot of amazing people. And to everybody that worked on the short film, I want to say thank you. It was really fun getting to work with all of you and create a movie together. I appreciate you all helping me direct my first short film and while it didn't turn out how we had all planned, it was a really fun experience and I definitely won't forget it. So if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. I post weekly videos based on filmmaking and photography. And I'll see you guys next week. Yeah.